Joe likes Scorsese and Ranan is Jewy. It's Joe and Ranan talk movies. All right, we're back. We're here. The most controversial podcast <laughs> in America is back. <laughs> Woo, we ruffled some feathers. By the way, do I look okay? I feel like last podcast I was slouched over, my tits were like over my head, and I just looked terrible. Well, you're two podcasts away from wearing blackface. You got a black sweatshirt, black <laughs> pants, thick beard. Weight. Here's the thing about being fat, right? I've gained weight, but the problem is when you gain weight, you just wear more black. So everyone's like, looks like you've lost weight. So that happens when you've gained weight. Right. But then I went to my personal trainer today. And he's like, you've gained like 10 pounds. He just well, said, this guy sucks. Like, nah, he's right. I immediately signed up for like 22 more sessions. <laughs> that's the way to do it. You play the guitar on the MTV. I mean, that's a good, that's smart. If you're a trainer, you should always be like, yo, you're a fat shit. You look fucking <laughs> tub of like, shit. $40,000. Just make this go away. Well, don't have a baby because uh, after three days in the hospital, we're just, you're just ordering delivery you're nervous you know i have I, my steps are like 11 a day it's like impossible to be nutritious when you have kids no and then i did a set and uh i was like i'm a fat shit i'm a fat fucking slob of shit why are you not thinner than you <laughs> no maybe your hair but uh hello folks we're back do you feel Action. fat do skinny thin people feel fat a lot no i do feel fat i try i want to do this as a joke but it's so mean where i'm like this i'm i feel fucking fat as shit and people are like look at me but i'm like well yeah you're disgusting <laughs> You're just horrific. <laughs> like, yeah, you're too far gone. This is horrible. I'm not saying I'm like you. Yeah, you're like an empire that's already falling apart. I'm like America on the decline. There's hope. You know yeah, I mean? I'm trying like, yeah, I fucking look mushy. By the way, no, we can't get political, can we? Or can we? Or can we talk about whether you see the poll in the New York Times about like if they had the election today, Trump would win? Yeah, every poll is saying that. It's insane. Here's every my poll thing. saying that. Yeah, no, Trump is going to win. <laughs> you should just start accepting it now. But can we survive that? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we can survive anything anymore. My thing is, even uh, I guess this is the problem. Even if you hate Biden, you should just vote for him just so you can vote again. You know what I mean? Like, just so you can. Like, I don't know what you mean. Like. Because he's not attacking democracy, you know. I feel oh, like that's I see. The, I feel like that's the base level for a president that they leave when they're supposed well, to leave. Trump will have to die at some point. He's like seventy-eight years old and overweight. <sighs> yeah, and it's McDonald's. But these narcissists—they have none of the guilt, which ages. They don't have the guilt, and they don't have listening. When you listen to people and feel their pain, it fucking ages you. you yeah, know what I mean? I've aged <laughs> fucking ten minutes during this five-minute podcast. But when you're a narcissist, it's like it's like the uh, fountain of youth. No one's you're not taking on anyone's emotional baggage. You're not listening, so you're not getting drained. You just go on forever. Biden's empathetic, and that's why he looks like the fucking crypt keeper. Well, he's also <laughs> he's also ninety-seven. It is tough for Biden to be like last election was like fighting the whole "I'm not too old" thing, but then you have to fight that again four years. <laughs> <laughs> later i know it's a bit <laughs> tricky yeah and trump doesn't get any of the age thing no no he gets the everything else thing well he's like he has that embalmed face it's like it doesn't you know what i mean it doesn't like grow old or grow young yeah i suppose so everyone right, we lost everyone furious. <laughs> everyone's furious yeah it's crazy and it's nuts and then you're doing that laugh into the microphone just pull the mic down that's all <laughs> i'm trying to look better i'm gaining weight it's awful well, we, we touched on that i've gained weight too but i'm yeah. doing prison workouts upstairs but i have how about me you I got an Equinox membership. It's nine hundred and forty-eight dollars a month, and I haven't been in ten days. Jesus I'm just doing uh, burpees. For, yeah. Well, doesn't the holding baby do anything? I guess no. Not. He weighs eight pounds. Yeah, I guess not. And I, you hold him like this. I'm not curling him. <laughs> I'm not like palming his head and lifting him up over my shoulders. You should do weights with him. But that, is that shaking the baby if you do it like this? You got to watch a whole video about shaking. Have the you baby. wanted it's to at all thing. or no? Have you felt the no. urge? No. No, I. but I did have a moment where I'm like, I'm not going to, but I, you can see, like, I get people leaving, being like this, oh. Just wa walking away. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really insane that, like, many people do that. People talk like about We're good. cold feet on the wedding. What about cold feet at the at the pregnancy, at the birth? Like, they hand you the baby, the guy who's like, actually, no, I made a terrible mistake. Well, you there's a moment. Away. I mean, there's a moment where you're like, in 10 minutes, I'm going to have a baby, and then that's it. I just have a baby. And you're like, you don't have a baby. And you're like, oh, right. OK, that's the moment. Yeah. You yeah. Just, there's many moments like that. Do you. Yeah. So what does it feel like? You feel like you're. Uh, but you seem actually in a good place. I see you like talking to the kid. You have a nice like voice. You give you seem you seem like your gentle soul is coming out. 
Of course. I am a gentle soul. You always but say I, things like this. What? The other day, you were like freaking out, and I was giving you sage advice, and you're like, you're so zen since the baby. I'm like, this has been our relationship for 10 years. Literally. Well, you're no, always I, like, ah! Well, I've never heard and I'm you like, like oh, talking you know. to a little kid. It's just, you know, an emphasis. I know, but I'm it. talking about this other episode where you were freaking out about... Somebody not, yeah, your thing. By the way, I, I, I feel like I got someone fired today at Starbucks. We should talk about that before we go into Killers of the Flower Moon. Well, not fired. You got her. She's like suicide. We're going to talk about Killers of the Flower Moon. We're going to really deep dive. We both have really strong analysis. But yes, yeah, so this is what happened. We go there. I go there every day, three times a day. I got a grande emperor's clouds. Everybody knows me. Everybody loves me. They go crazy for He's me. Turned, his OCD has turned Starbucks into like a mom and pop. Everyone there is like, Joe, let's get it out. The fucking uh, Howard Schultz is there high-fiving you. You're just like, uh, it's like a mom and pop place well, for you. corporations are people too. That's true. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Mitt Romney. Um, uh, well, I went in there and there's one lady who's an adorable, sweet so lady. So It's insane. Really? <laughs> what? You don't think so? So hot, it's insane. No, she's very attractive. <laughs> I, I, I hate when this happens when we're talking about girls, and then suddenly everyone's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> well, no, she's not. Nobody would describe her as so hot. I say that about everyone. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I know she's very pretty. I say that about everyone who's not my girlfriend. I, you know, I'm she's pretty. Yeah, I, I, that's. I don't know. She's really cute. Yes, really cute. That's so different than so hot it's insane. Don't you see those? Exaggerative. I'm like a broy guy. I'm like so fucking hot. But don't you see the difference between so hot it's insane and really cute? I think for me, my baby's really cute. He's not so hot. hot. I think for me, really cute is so hot it's insane. Okay, you know that's insane. Well, I'm trying to make it better because I think I got her fired today. You know, but any well, she's not gonna get fired. She's gonna kill herself. This poor little (laughs) tulip. Before we, we say this, just know I was trying to be affable. I just want to. I just want to get ahead of the story. We go in there, and the lady. Everyone knows me there, but this young lady, she's not there as much. And she says, uh, "Oh, what is it? The uh, she's like, it's the English breakfast, right?" And I said, "Oh, it's actually the Emperor's Clouds." And then you go, "Whoa! There's a there's a kink in the Matrix here, the space time continuum. There's somebody here who doesn't know your order. How do you not know his order?" And the lady. Didn't take it as like, but she was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." <laughs> That's I feel not how bad. I meant it. I was clearly She's like, just... "I feel bad." And then she went to the other, and the other lady like swooped in and was like, "No, no, I got it. I'll take over." And I was she's trying like, to make a joke, but everyone acted like I'm like your uh, busting ass agent. Hey, you get Joe's order right the first time, you fucking bitch. Like I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> well, then, I just thought it was funny. She went over to the T, and you could I could literally hear her. You were talking about some bullshit, and then she was literally like, "This, I don't know. I thought it was <laughs> the Emperor's Clowns. I feel bad." And I'm like, "You actually upset her." And then she came. My over. intention. I and know. She was like, "I'm so sorry again. I, I should know it better." And now you're. I'm associated with I you. Know, I know. I look like a dick. I look like I'm like, what well, the you fuck? Put trying to make a joke, right? You see that I was being affable. But you did it so big and immediately. Yeah, yeah. You're like, "Whoa!" Doesn't know his order over here. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, anyway, when I, I came back after the gym, I felt I was going to apologize. I mean, I wanted to get coffee, but I was going to apologize, and she wasn't there. So I think she may have been fired. I don't know. No, she's fucking hanging from a tree somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're out there. What's your name? I don't know her name. <laughs> I'm sorry about the whole coffee thing. I was just trying to be uh, folksy and affable, and I apologize. Well, I hope she's not listening. I'm making a case against her being hot. She's well, smoking hot. I thought I was trying to create the mom. I thought that's how you create the mom and pop relationship with the place. That was like my first attempt the thing at is, doing it. You're a brilliant comedian. You're a oh, very you. smart guy. You know film, but you're just not that guy. Not you're that never going to be that guy. I'm not that guy. No. I you can't. come in, you're like, whoa, look at the tits <laughs> on her. <laughs> I really cannot be affable. No, no, that's me. Yeah. You're you. Just that, be you. That's why I'm like a little, like, I can never be affable, and I'm a little jealous and not like. Uh, you can be laughable. <laughs> I, I don't have catchphrase, I don't have lines. Like, you know, I don't have like a line, so I just say what I feel, and then that's bad. But you could say, "Hey, how's it going?" I'm not. Great how you doing? There. And then I talk about the weather, and then I'm just like, "The Jews control the weather." Like I don't, I don't know how to do anything. No, I'm you're not, not good at small talk. I'm very not, bad at small. You're talk. You're not good, uh, Caddyshack. Let's talk some cinema, <laughs> Let's talk and then we'll bullshit more of the Flower Moon. We saw it four months ago. I have vague memories of it. <laughs> I, I literally have nothing to say about the film other than I loved it. I have no analysis. I, I got to take my sweatshirt off. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I'm, I'm fat. Well, you better hold the t-shirt down. This is your worst nightmare. Oh, God. I, I, I'll hold it for you, but I don't want to touch. Oh, this is going to be bad. Should we cut? We should put one of those. Boo! 
There we go. Nice. Still black. I love you just kept peeling off black layers. Uh, all right. You ready? Yeah. Are your pants tucked into your sock? May I ask that? Because it looks like, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, all right. your jeans are tucked into your socks. By the way, I take my special. I fucking wore a stupid, like, kind of thick black T-shirt. They had to stop, like, four times to, like, do work on me. It was awful. My sweat, like, stopped production, like, 12 times. I'm like, hey, it's great to be here. Stop. <laughs> I had to come in and put all the fucking makeup. I couldn't get a word out. <laughs> Such a mistake. Well, what does this trainer do? I don't understand the trainer. Well, the trainer, I mean, <laughs> what does he do? Yeah, apparently nothing. Well, we were working, and then I fell, and he went on vacation, and I oh, gained right. 10 I remember pounds. the fall. Yeah. Um, but I'm back, and please, no fat jokes. I'm losing weight. It's going to happen. You're making the fat jokes. <laughs> well, I mean, the comments, you know. Oh, okay. yeah. Don't read the comments. Well, I got a nutritionist, but I got one of those intuitive nutritionists who's, like, trying to make you, like, realize all food is, like, good for you like nothing's bad he's like you know you right. want a snack you don't want to hate anything have an m&m for a snack eat like cheese and carbs for every meal i just gained weight like <laughs> well here's what i don't understand you're that guy peter At atia mm -mm. atia guy you know that guy he's all about longevity he's on every podcast he's on sam harris yeah, and yeah. rogan and all stuff he's the longevity expert and uh we're trying to have a mind mindful metal jacket we'll don't know if that will happen but he talks about how food is not nearly as important as exercise he said the two keys are don't undereat and don't overeat. Yes. Like it's like as long as your calories in, calories out, if you're burning them, if you overeat, you know, you're gonna get fat and die. And if you undereat, you'll get skinny and die. He's like, but other than that, it doesn't really matter. And he has a whole theory about like two thousand calories of French fries is better than five thousand calories of spinach or whatever, because mm. it's less calories. But then later in the same podcast, he's like, Well, high blood pressure is the worst thing ever. If your blood pressure is high, you but I'm like but food causes your blood pressure to go up. Yes. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like fries make blood pressure go up. I, I hate all these people. Who yeah. come in, you're like, don't look at your phone for four hours. You know, it's like, shut the fuck up. Sometimes you just want to eat a piece of cake and jack off. Go fuck yourself in your perfect life. Yeah, it's tough. Well, um, it, 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 it's like so much of social media creates a false idea that we could be living some perfect life. I know, I it know. It makes it seem like all these guys, they wake up, they pray, they do jumping jacks, they eat a slice of lettuce and then they you know stare at the sun for two days <laughs> can i be honest whatever. i'm not i'm not that if you're like a jack scientist you lose all credibility for me you know what i mean mm. it's like a chef you want them to be fat you want them to be fat and like doing research and pale if they're like jack like huberman i'm like go fuck yourself you're just a spin you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean i don't really agree but i know <laughs> what you mean i'm the opposite i want someone that looks healthy like sometimes you have like a buddhist guy who reads about health and longevity and life and zen and then you see a photo and he's like 350 pounds <laughs> well the buddha himself could have fucking uh no I mean, that's a false that's narrative a false thing yeah that's fake he's Those not aren't, fat no the, the real buddha is not fat and like <laughs> he's <laughs> like I'm a not, thinny skinny uh, well, Asian that makes guy. more sense because you see the fat buddha statue and you're like he doesn't have control over his no <laughs> no that's not the buddha <laughs> It's more the Buddha's like, like he you. Looks like than he's you. like nothing is real but pancakes. You know what I mean? Like he's just eat. You know, the boot is me. They want people to think it's you, but it's me. Why do they make it the fat guy? I think it's because Americans look more, are fat. I don't we know. We look more affable, maybe. I think, but there's no way he was fat. He lived in fucking 48 <laughs> BC. Well, you were fat and, back then. You had to work at it. <laughs> well, that's like the like old. How, you had to just eat so much fruit. You got fat. That's well, crazy. That's the interesting switch. The old adage where, like, back in the day, fat people were wealthy because they could eat. They could right. afford and meals. Now, poor and, process, now yeah. exactly. Now, fat people are poor. But how did you get fat in like the 1300s? Because that everyone in the 1300s was pretty much following. Following Whole Thirty, I think they ate a lot of uh, grapes. People fed them grape and cum. Grapes probably. can make you fat. I don't know. They're a grape. <laughs> Let's talk about the okay. movie. <laughs> All right, mark down what time we start talking yeah, about the yeah, movie. Yeah. For because if they if you don't put a fucking time, we'll never watch it. Capsule. They'll get furious with us. But this is good. This is you know the little riff up top. Killers of the Flower Moon. We saw it. I loved it. You we, yeah. You texted me. I didn't see it yet. You texted me. You said it was a masterpiece. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, really overhyped it. <laughs> Not and, me. And then I and then I watched it. I think two days later, and um, you still love it, or what? It started one day later, but it ended two days later. <laughs> what? <laughs> <clears throat> well, I haven't seen it. Was far, so full disclosure. Here's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I went to see the film three Sundays ago now, yeah. and I'm I'm I've said this before. I'm famous for misjudging movies after one viewing because. 
So much factors in. I was about to have a child. It's my last Sunday pre-child. And uh, I was by myself, which I love and I'll never get again. And I had a yes. big bag of popcorn, a big so bag of M&Ms. Yeah. I'm alone. And, you know, it's Scorsese. That's my guy. That's my guy. So this is like your new night. Film. This is your day of freedom, kind of. And De Niro and DiCaprio and whatever the lady that's amazing, but I'll never know her we'll name because she's never getting another movie again. <laughs> so you, you, for you, this was like you ha almost had to like it. It sounds like it. Well, it was a big moment, but also Scorsese is a guy that, I mean, I think uh, Color Money is not great. It's fun. I like it. I like the um, cinematography, and I love Tom Cruise, and I like Paul Newman, but it's not a great film. People are going to get upset about this, yeah, but it's yeah. not. Sorry. No, people know that, You right? can love it. <laughs> you can love it, but it's not a great film, and uh, you know, New York, New York is very pretty, but not a great film. But he seems- But for the most part, if Scorsese makes something, I love it. it well, for it, he is, out of all directors, seemed incapable of making a- completely bad movie he yes. seems completely him and the coen brothers seem pretty i don't know coen brothers can i get think lady you. killers is pretty shitty yeah i guess you're right actually they actually can make some kind of weird but and the intolerable cruelty i don't think is great it's good it's not it's not terrible but like i don't think hudsucks or proxy is very great either yeah, actually, actually, definitely but, you're right scorsese is the only one who like can like it's like you feel like you're in least good hands and you start watching this movie and right away it's like funny and real and feels like there's none of that like, I don't know, like pretentiousness or stiffness with other like period pieces. Right. Just right away, like their first scene between Leo and De Niro, it's pretty funny and like, you know, it just has like a good sense. Of, you, you know what it is? Of course, he has a good sense of humor. More so than <laughs> I know, but he's yes. not. But it's but I mean, no one thinks of him as like you know a comedic director exactly. But he is, I guess, in many ways. They don't, but I think of him as making some of the funniest movies ever, including Goodfellas, Casino, Wolf, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street, Street is a straight up comedy. Yeah. King of Comedy is a comedy. It's um, it's all all his movies like there is just this like this humor and banter to them. Yes, you know? Mean Streets has hilarious moments. Taxi Driver has one of the funniest lines ever that I talk about all the time. What line? That I man you kill work all the n words. Or? <laughs> yeah, that man you work with, I don't like him. It's not that I don't like him. It's just I think he's silly. <laughs> I mean that is one of the all time lines <laughs> on a date to say the man you work with, I don't like him. <laughs> and, and then to correct silly? it, it's not that I don't like him. I think he's silly. <laughs> and the idea that Travis to Travis Bickle. Someone who is silly is just the worst thing you can like possibly be. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because he's like the most serious man ever. <laughs> That's just amazing. Yeah, and, no. um, and and right away the movie, like the minute of the movie starts, you're in like great hands. Taxi Driver or Killers of the Flower Moon? Killers, of, I mean both, but Killers yeah. of the Flower Moon. The right, right when it starts, you're in great hands. The music by Robbie Robertson is incredible. I think I, just I didn't think, realize he did the music. It's so good. And he's dead. What? This like Tupac, like he came out with something afterwards or what? Yeah, posthumously. <laughs> Is that the word? When did he die? Oh, he died this year, didn't he? Yeah, he died 10 wow. minutes ago. So it's going to win the Oscar, I guess, for a score or something. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The music is great. All those Native American, you know, I don't want to do them. But <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I can't do that. Hey, 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 hey. It just starts raining. But that is what it sounds like, by the way. I mean, it's not like that's raining. It is like, hey, 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 hey. It is sounds like that. Yes, I, dude, I got in trouble <laughs> when the Ken Burns Vietnam came out, another masterpiece, yeah. one of the best things ever made ever, in my opinion. But uh, I was like, it's crazy how they talk, because it's like, they're like, literally like, doink, doink, go, doink. I know. And so I was like, oh, you can't. And I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> that is the sound. That's what it sounds like. And I'm saying it's great. I love, though. I, I, I love that. I, it, it, it like gives me goosebumps. I love it. But it is. It's not like they don't sound like that. I'm saying I it's know. a good sound. But it is that. By the way, this, someone is moving into our apartment right now. Our old apartment above us and must be like, this is the worst mistake I've ever made. <laughs> You're screaming. Right. But so the movie starts out great and it's like exciting. Oh my God. I just remembered he's Asian too. Well, but this is uh, Native American. That's kind I know, of but I was doing Oh Vietnamese. yeah, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not Vietnamese though. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, I know. This will be tough. But uh, oh, we're all going to get canceled this apartment. Well, I didn't say anything bad. I just said <laughs> that's the sound what they sound is like good. When you oh, yeah, yeah. It's a fun, it's good. It's a great sound. I love it. Good I, sound. I love Native Americans. We should never have killed them all. That's what I think. What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, they try. We tried to work together. Yeah, we gave it. We gave it a good try. We gave it a fair <laughs> shake. <laughs> We had like one Thanksgiving dinner that killed all of them. Well, it's uh, our area. 
<laughs> I mean, we well, discovered we named it. all the parks after that. And that's everything. Every, Washington, yeah, yeah. Massachusetts, Massasoit. It's pretty everything. respectful if you think about of it. Of course. I mean, we weren't respectful in keeping them alive, but we definitely honor them afterwards. Every fucking park is like uh, Comanche Falls. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they live on reservations. They're it's like fine. a camp. They get money. Many of them were also chopping the heads off, scalping. Yeah. Let's not act like, you know what I mean? They weren't scalping each other up. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But uh, most on. of them were just kind of like. Just hanging out, yeah. <laughs> living their lives. Have you ever read a speech by like a Native American chief like when they're about to have like some kind of like treaty? Or with the white people, every speech by a Native American chief is the most beautiful thing in the world because they can they only speak in metaphors. It's just incredible, right? Well, I watched the the Jordan doc, of course, and Phil Jackson is really into Native yeah. American and Native American history. And when he's talking about it, it's really, it's just beautiful. I'm touched. I their, their language is incredible. But anyway, um, so I like the movie at first. I'm liking it. But then there's a certain point where, it, and this is my issue with the movie. But it's also like I have very mixed feelings, and I do want to see it again. This is a very unique movie because essentially this is the story is a very traditional story about how like a, a group, it's kind of like a civil rights movie essentially showing mm -hmm. something evil, you know, but this is the first like kind of civil rightsy movie or kind of like movie showing something horrible from the perspective of the racist villains. It's like if that movie Till, Emmett Till was centered around the racist guys who killed him. It's a very unique. I've never seen a movie, really. But you're saying this as a criticism. No, I'm saying it as a criticism and a plus. It's kind of like this. It's like, I think it was a weird, it's a tough choice for me to connect with, but I think it stood out a lot more than other movies. My problem with that is the motivations get a little confusing to me. Like, I think De Niro is, you don't really get a sense of what he's, I mean, I know he's racist. Money. Yeah, but like you want to at least show him what he's wanting to use the money for or something. You know what I mean? There's like a speech at the end where he's like, "We, I gave them so much." Like at least show some of his. I don't know. I, I guess he to me he just came off as a devil. No. Um, I guess he's devilly. Yeah, he's I a guess tad devilly, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, devilly. well, there's greed, and he, you know, it's it's. But in like greed? Goodfellas, you see the greed and you see them enjoying it. It's not like you ever see De Niro like being like, ah, oh, great, now I got that money for that house. You know what I mean? It's like, I, but I, you I, see how he's living. He's living very well. And, yeah, but uh, he I, also you can see that he wants to have this feeling of being this grandpa character, right? This kind of like sage leader I don't know. guy. It, maybe it's the acting, but to me it just felt like he well, he's was. He's not a great actor. Yeah. <laughs> well, to me it just felt I I actually don't I actually it, this is what I'll say. I think he was miscast. Really? Yeah, I think they should have gone if you're going to go the devil way or it's just someone who really is just evil, get someone who looks way more warm like Tom Hanks. Get someone who's like actually like looks very empathetic cuz the problem with De Niro is he looks so evilly that it makes the Native Americans look dumb for not realizing he's the one killing everyone. Like the Native Americans are in the tent having that conversation, and De Niro's like, I'll give a hundred more dollars for the investigation. And none of them are like, maybe he's the one killing everyone. Right. But don't you think he, that he's really won them over? He's dug himself so deep. I mean, that's a big part of the film, don't you think? He's so deep in that you don't look to the closest people to you. I guess, but I want to see someone who, I guess Dylan, yeah, Dylan, De Niro isn't always like to me. Perfect a, Freudian slip, by the way. <laughs> De Niro is always like, um, like to me, what he does in the village is he fakes empathy to like have everyone kind of be on his side. Right. He's always praying with them. He's always like hugging them. I guess I want to see someone who looks more empathetic. To me, De Niro looks like the bad guy right away. So it's just R his face? It's the way he acts, his face. He looks evil. But don't you say, isn't that, that was one of the criticisms that I've read over and over again. I think you might have mentioned it too, that like in the book, it's a slow reveal that they're horribly evil. Yes. And they're corrupt. But this movie just comes right out and says it. Which I... I have mixed feelings about it because I do think the book, if you've read the book, which is great, it is kind of more traditional where it's focused around the Native Americans and all these deaths. And then it is similar. I mean, it's real life, but it is the traditional story of the other white man coming in and kind of figuring it out and in a way like bringing justice. So essentially that cliche has been done before. The white 
savior. This is the first movie to be like the white devil. <laughs> like It's right. like the opposite of the white savior. So I do think it's unique in that way. And I do think the way it was told in the book is more traditional. But I think this way brings up a lot of problems they don't really have trouble they have trouble solving which is a de niro does seem so villainous i do think it it does seem like um it does seem like surprising that these native americans who are smart wouldn't suspect him just because he just seems so villainous and b my other issue is and i this is i have trouble with and i want to watch it again i might have to rescind this but it seems like they're suggesting that leo really was in love with her and I have trouble wrapping my head around that. How do you kill the, her sister and start slowly killing her and still be in love? I mean, he, I guess he's like just very dumb. Well, a couple of things I would say yeah. is one, the perception of the Native Americans, they're not seeing what we're seeing. They I don't know. have a surveillance camera when he's like, all right, sonny boy, we're going <laughs> to kill all these Native Americans. Like, right. He's, he's portraying himself as really good and, and kind. I know, but he is like, they're all getting knocked off. And he is like, I don't know, the center of the town. And they don't even suspect him at all. Uh, are we sure they don't suspect him at all? I feel like there's one part in the tent where they're talking about going to the investigation. And he's just like, I'll give uh, five, you know. Right. It's just, I, I don't know. I think he looks villainy whether you see those moments or not. You can't, you don't think he looks villainy? I all, guess. I mean, look at his face. I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, think of like. There's many people that don't seem I mean, like a, a, to more politics. George W. Bush. I don't think people are like he just looks and seems villainy. He seems quite affable and fun and, and sweet. I guess what I'm saying is I don't think De Niro can convey the. Affability. We needed the George W. We George W. George Bush. W. I don't think De Niro. He had, he is a great actor, but he is in the cold side. I think as an actor. I think he's very cold. I know, but I feel like and he's I, showing that cold side in the behind the scenes moments, but not so much with the Native Americans. That's what makes it so compelling. I guess I just think even I'm not convinced when he's hugging them and going, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a, like a Jerry Sandusky. Jerry Sandusky's raping children. No one's suspecting him because he's just an old man running up and down the sidelines. Right. But, but no if, one was like this. I don't know. This but guy. if everyone knew children were being raped, I feel like people didn't know. If everyone was like, I think they all did these know. children he's coaching are getting raped, who could it be? I feel like they'd suspect him. <laughs> I, I, I guess so. I guess, I guess I can't come up with a great There's like an FBI for. agent but, being like, check out the Sandusky. All his kids are being raped in the gym. Check it out. I feel like he'd at least be a suspect. <laughs> I mean, eventually he became a suspect <laughs> for sure. Did he die? They're just Paterno died. He's alive in prison, right? Yeah. Doesn't he look that? exactly like Jeffrey Epstein? I don't think so. No? No. All right. But um, I, I, so I don't know. I'm not I, being I prejudiced. I'm not saying all pedophiles look alike. I'm not. Don't, no. Don't, we would never say don't that. Don't come at me. Jesus right? Christ. <laughs> what the hell? That's where we lose all of the kind of podcast we are. <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I didn't feel that way. And again, I have to see this movie alive or dead. Sandusky? Alive. I thought so. Thank God. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Got nervous. Oh, God, thank God. That was, that was, I mean, first fucking Matthew Perry. I hey, couldn't take it anymore. Sandy, <laughs> uh, subscribe if you haven't already, my friend. I don't know if you're getting the YouTubes in there, but you oh, should man. be. I but, hope he's not on YouTube in prison. <laughs> At least they So, can. from my perspective, I just didn't have it, but I might have to see it again and again. I mean, again, a Scorsese movie with DiCaprio and De Niro, no less, I'm going to watch 50 times in my life. So, it's hard. Usually, when we talk about movies, I've seen them many times. Like, you're, you're like, I have a kid, and I'll watch this four and a half right. hour movie 12 more times. I had that moment. I was like, I got to go see it again. And I was, I had just like stopped in my, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't you see this wait again. Until he gets, goes to college. <laughs> yeah. It's three and a half hours. Hours. Well, right now the baby's at an age. By the way, you can watch any movie. It you can get matter. it in now. Get it. In yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. We're watching porn up there all day. <laughs> um, but I, when I watched it, I didn't get that feeling. I was so pulled in. I was real. Yeah. I was just in there. By the way, my other part of the story was I felt a little sick. I was like, I'm going to go to the movies. And as the movie unfolded, by the end, I had full blown COVID. <laughs> I was yeah. like, my head was like in a red. <laughs> there was like, I was so in the movie. I was like, I love this. And I had like a brief moment where you step out of the film for a second and you're like i'm really sick and i'm having a baby in four days <laughs> literally four days away from having a baby but the movie kinda, it seems like you got a lot of emotional stuff with this movie i got a lot of emotional stuff obviously i'm i'm, I'm bare i'm i'm raw with yeah. emotion and feelings but i cried at this movie i mean scorsese coming out at you the end yeah you and when, when did you cry we talked about this well right? i'm in the process of oh, telling sorry, you sorry. but um <laughs> But uh, DiCaprio's, um, what do you call that? When you're on the trial there, 
Trial? Deposition, whatever. Testimony. Testimony. <laughs> his te- I'm a little sleep deprived and I'm dumb. <laughs> uh, but his testimony, that that beautiful single close up shot of him giving the thing when he just admits that he's like, no, I actually am in love with her. It was I, so touching to me. I guess beautiful. I, I, and Scorsese's I, cameo. It was hard to find it touching because I'm like, how do you love someone? When you're literally killing all their family members, I don't. And it, I would it, ask you the same question about your <laughs> fucking. But also, partner. like, if there is a love there, I think it could be explained more. Like, I, I just think, like, what's his justification? But this is your biggest complaint with movies. I know. Oh, I they know. explain it. They don't show it. They explain it. That's your literal number one. I, I think it's about a gotcha moment. I think I might have. They might have gone the other way too much on this. Oh, I'm everything's like little... always one way or the other with you. Well, <laughs> but that's they don't have to. If they explained it, you'd hate that they explained it. They show it. They show that beautiful so shot. So he is. Just he is in love but with he's this woman. Being manipulated, don't you see? Well, that's the other Think thing. Think about all the men that abuse their why. Maybe this is the bad. That, it's a it's a microcosm. Maybe it's an the allegory. bad casting of De Niro. But I don't see how De Niro has this huge pers- persuasive sway. He's an he's, old man. He's dumb and he's, he's a family member. He's spanking him at one point, and Leo's like ah. <laughs> like it's like insane. That's one of the that most- parts of problem. <laughs> and it's the same problem with the Irishman when he's stepping on the hand. This is worse because he's like he's like it's not worse. He's There's like no way it's worse. You just like love Irishman. Spanking him before bed at that fucking eyes wide shut ceremony. He's like, Ooh! and Leo's like, ah, <laughs> like fucking Braveheart. It's like what the hell is going on it's here? It's literally someone's first day in the house. You're Sorry. screaming. Sorry. This guy is gonna be like, I have to move. I think our landlord's outside. Well, too. so why do you move? It's, it's okay. <laughs> why do we need him here? <laughs> that was, was full De Niro. So we moved. So we fucking move. So what? What's the big deal? Um, don't get too worried. Don't get too worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, you care what she thinks. All I want to do is talk about Goodfellas, by the way. When he knocks on the fucking window, come on, fuckos. He goes, what should I tell Bell? What, what do you care? Give, give shit. Yeah. That is such an I amazing know. moment in the history of fucking cinema. Well, Henry t- Hill is just not cut out for this life. He cares about Bell's feelings. De Niro can't understand that he can't, well, is concerned. And we've talked about this. My favorite moment, which you just never see in movies, where he's like, hey, I'll see you later. Like, right, you never I'll see, see you it, later. You never see it, I'll see you later. Everyone's always hanging up in the middle of the line. In reality, they'd be like, that's rude. <laughs> Everyone's like, get it done, king. But here you actually see Mobster to be like, I'll see you next week. All right, see ya. Like, I, I, I never see a see you later. Well, Scorsese and Larry David, those are the two yeah. artists, the two greatest artists of all time. That have really gotten into hitting things that you don't see anywhere else in yeah, shows or yeah. movies. They're the best. By the way, I watched um, Beloved Aunt, which I think is the number one episode of Curb ever. It's pretty great. It's unbelievable. The first 10 seconds, I'm howling laughing. Do you remember? <laughs> They're at the wake for uh, oh, the, Becky's the, aunt. The temperature. He's looking, checking the temperature. Yes, it's just a person crying, another person crying. They're all saying goodbye, and it just cuts to him looking at the thermostat like this, and he's going... I actually had, you ever have a moment where you just realize we don't fully fathom how great Larry David is? I had that moment the other day where I'm like. I never have those moments. That's all <laughs> well, I think about. Well, I had the moment the other day like, what other person created the greatest show ever that he's not in and that yes. happened to be the one of the greatest comedic actors of all time? Right. It's like, that's like crazy. Yeah. That's like if like. Like, I don't even know what Woody Allen, at least from the beginning, was in it. Like, he created something amazing without him. Woody Allen did the opposite. Yeah. 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 But then badly for a lot of times. But like, uh, well, he does a lot more. But I mean, like, to be fair, Larry's made two things. <laughs> and by the way, Larry also made Sour Grapes, which is the single well, yeah, worst yeah. film I've ever yeah, seen ever. I literally cannot complete the movie. It is. It is. He can do, he can go bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and some terrible seasons of Curb. But let's frankly. go back to Killers. I want to talk more about Killers. Um, Fine. I, I think watching it, on one hand, it is unique because you're like, I've never seen like a Hollywood movie where the main characters are just deplorable racists. It's like such a strange thing to watch. Where Leonardo DiCaprio, this beloved actor, is just a horrible and not racist like. Like the way he is in Django Unchained. Yeah, not like he's enjoying it. Racist, like they just don't think they're human beings. Right. Like, like a lot of like that guy, that tall guy at the end, who's great, who's in The Irishman. I mean, one of the funniest parts of the movie where he's like, you hear him talk and being like, so if I can adopt the kids, I can then kill them, get the money. And then the guy's just like, are you talking about like what he just said? Right. Like that part's amazing. Like, like the way they, it's showing people not even like, it's not even showing racist as like, mean and angry it's showing them as like people who just don't think they're human beings and yeah. so it's very casual it's quite stunning it's quite intense but after a while i'm unclear 
I think after a while, you're not to me learning as much. There's not, I think that makes it unique, but there's not as much room for it to go. After a while, I feel like I started finding myself feeling the same emotion over and over again, which is look how horrible these white people are. And it just kind of hit that note over and over and over again. And I think when you focus on such deplorable people and have that be the framework of the narrative, I do think it's like there's just not that much to these people. I I I think like DiCaprio is just like re- it's a lot to have the main character be really evil and really dumb. <laughs> it sounds like you had a problem with George W. Bush again. Yeah, it sounds like you had a problem with the runtime, which is the most common critique of the film. I mean, he is in this. Me and Sam were talking about this. He's in this weird limbo. It's like Sam know, hated it. Yeah, I know, I know. He we're in this limbo where he's like, either make a mini series or make a shorter movie. He's in this weird three and a half hours is tough. But that, so the the answer to that is make it ten hours. No, I actually think it shouldn't have been framed around them. I actually think if you st- if you went with the book and had at the end you realize Leonardo DiCaprio, whose character seems really good, actually happened to be in on it. I think that could have been a really powerful moving twist. And I think by disclosing it right away, while I do think. It's a unique choice. I think it's also a bad choice, if that makes sense. Well, to I quote, think it's unique and bad. To quote Woody Allen in Manhattan, I, uh, I want to sell some tickets here, let's be honest. <laughs> but this is actually, to me, the opposite. They didn't go with the, the traditional narrative of making it a mystery. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that's that's the one thing I read that I, I guess was bummed out after was that, like, the Jesse Plemons character, who's the most unique character, like the sort of birth of the FBI, I mean, is so f- interesting, and it comes in like with thirty minutes left. He's barely in it, and, that's- and I love Investigation. I rewatched Zodiac for the five hundredth time the night before the baby, and you're like, this is the best movie fucking ever because the investigation is so fun. Yeah, of course, and I think like De Niro and the Irishman, you know, that was a character who obviously has very sociopathic qualities, but he really does feel guilt for killing Pacino. And you feel this internal conflict. You know what I mean? Right. I don't exactly feel Leonardo DiCaprio's internal conflict. I almost you don't feel it in that scene with the testimony and the and the tears. And I'm the like, thing. how do you know? It seems like such crocodile tears at this point. You killed his her whole family, like because he didn't love the whole family. He loved her. I I guess I hate to say it, but I, I think Scorsese went too far in terms of reprehensible characters. You I, wouldn't I, kill your girlfriend's family. <laughs> He poisons her, and he's about to kill her. I, I mean, know, because the uncle has a grip on him. He's being uh, manipulated, you I see? see? It the, just takes one person. It's like the Nazis. What's the grip? De Niro, he comes in, De Niro's like, I want you to kill some Native Americans. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I already started. What's the grip? I feel like he- Well, like, he's a simpleton, <laughs> and that's his uncle who has all this power well, over him. Well, maybe they'll make the movie about a simpleton. <laughs> Like well, what are they make, supposed to make the movie about? About the fucking Native Americans wondering well, who's killing them. Which is interesting because <laughs> they actually made, consciously made a change to make it more about Native Americans. Which is crazy because I'm like, how little were they in there originally? <laughs> they weren't even, it wasn't even Native Americans. It was just other... <laughs> I heard that Leo there like you got to put them more in there. I'm like, are, what were they? Were they just Leo the whole time? But I think they're in there quite a bit. By the way, we got to talk about the performance of the what, what's her name again? She's great, Lily, Lily Gladstone. Lily She's Gladstone. Great. I want to see more of it. Joey's sister. Show me more of her and less of De Niro, and DiCaprio just murdering Native Americans for twelve hours. Well, she was spectacular. She blew my mind. What else is she in? What is it? She's is she a TV person? Movies. I don't know. I saw her in a poster. She's great though. She's fantastic. I saw her in a poster. I also think it avoids if you're going to do the whole love thing. It avoids a relate. I think the relationship gets lost in it. I think you see the relationship a little with the rain, and she's like, "Be quiet." And you see, you yeah, s- that whole sequence. That is sequence is great. And you see him like being attracted to the stillness that he doesn't have in this capitalistic society, which is all like cars racing down the street and killing people for money. But you don't see more of that. It then just kind of drifts. That drifts away, and all you see is just Robbie Robertson's music over them just planning and killing without guilt, one Native American after another, after another, after another. And I think that's flat. I'm not saying they can't go in that direction. I don't think they I don't think they really focused enough on their relationship. No, I understand. I think these are all valid criticisms, and I've read them elsewhere, which is assume where you got them. <laughs> no, <I feel laughs> and, um, did Polly and Kale write this? Is <laughs> she al- back? Uh, and also... I know, just enjoy being in the world. I get it. I get it. And I agree. And I think it's technically brilliant. At the end, the scene where she goes. Um, I don't remember any scenes. The scene at the end where Lily Gladstone, I guess, has f- figured out that he's killed her family. She goes, What was in the insulin? And he won't tell her. Mm-hmm. And that's like the final moment. She's like, I really can't be with you. You're not honest. But it's like, he just admitted, you already know he killed like 
her whole tribe. Like, shouldn't that be the moment? I, I, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not saying they can't show her being in love with him, but they don't develop it enough to the point where I'm saying if she's still in love with him before that, that's insane. Well, maybe I'm different. I maybe it's like a Boston Irish Catholic thing. But if my wife killed my entire family, I would be fucking <laughs> thrilled. I'd be like, this is the one. I got her. I mean, that would be a Do big you agree relief. With my things. I know this was like your I just said the day before freedom and everything. You know? I know. Well, this is the the thing is like I, I, it's hard for me to properly um, sort of criticize and break down a, a film that I've seen one time in the theater. I was having a great time. I told you, I saw the Batman <laughs> by myself in Dallas, and I was like, this is the greatest film of all time. I mean, this is like the number one film I've ever seen. I watched it a second time a week later, and I was like, this is absolute dog shit. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I thought that was Louie. He's like talking. He like, he made it a Mystery Science Theater 3000. He just talked. <laughs> like, there's like many people in the theater, and he just like turned it into like, everyone's like, is Louie doing the director's commentary for this right now? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, all I know is I, I love the music. I love the the cinematography. I love, I love the, the performances. I, 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 I love that <laughs> shit. I loved uh, all of it, and I was just entranced. I was in the world, and the the a lot of the kills were great. I mean, the one out the fucking window was like a horror movie. That was yeah, jarring but just, and beautiful. I thought the relationship was great. I got emotional at the end. And uh, it was everything I wanted. I had COVID by the end of it, and I had a child by the credits finishing. I don't know. I just think, like, it, in a way, it felt like a very Kubrick-like movie where Kubrick will a lot of times oh, take out the suspense on. and the, like, like the, Dialogue. The, the drama from it. I feel like they took out the suspense of who's doing this. So you're just con so. But this is an often a criticism, and I, you're often criticized movies this way, and I'm sure I've done it too. But you're you're always criticizing a movie of like what they could have done or should have done. Yeah. But let's talk about what they did do. Well, I'm saying what they got wrong, wrong by doing. Like I'm saying right. to me, like you you were acting like if they just made it a murder mystery, that's silly. But actually, to me, some of the greatest movies. I didn't say it's silly. When did I say oh, silly? You were saying like, well, you didn't want to do a classic like who's killing all these you know Indians. You know what I mean? I don't think I said that. When did I say that? That's not what you said. I thought Today? you said that. Yeah, you know, a couple days ago. Uh, I don't think just so. Trust me, you have a baby. You have no sense of time and memory. <laughs> You're right, but yeah, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> also, you owe me three hundred bucks. Um, About what? I'm just joking. But uh, what? you want three hundred? I, <laughs> I mean, I'll just give you three hundred bucks. But I. Uh, I do think like I do think like some of the great movies when you actually have a mystery where the the murderer reveals something about the themes like for instance Chinatown, Mystic River, Gosford Park, those are some of the most effective movies. And if you would have had an ending where you found out this guy who claimed to love her really was involved, it would have been pretty it would have been a surprise. My problem with the movie is there's no surprises. You reveal this all early. But there's no surprises in Goodfellas. I mean, are there no surprises? I mean, are there surprises in Raging Bull? He wins the title? Yeah, I don't get surprises. it. surprises, yeah. So what are some surprises in Raging Bull? I mean, he, like, complete beats up. You didn't think he was going to beat up his brother by the end of it. You didn't think he was going to, like, fuck a 16-year-old. You didn't think, you kind of know exactly, with, with this, you kind of know exactly. I guess not. I didn't think he was going to be a moral guy, though. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to be moral. I didn't think he'd be, like, you know what I mean? Like, and with, I guess I just I'm, I guess maybe I'm confusing surprise with like twists. I don't mean surprise like twists. I mean surprise like character revelations. Yeah, I, I had suppose trouble. So. I feel like it lacked. You want to learn something about the characters, and I feel like I I feel like I just kind of knew who they were, and it was pretty awful. But you know, I could be wrong. I, I hate I hate saying this as criticism, but I got to watch it again because that's how I feel. Part of me feels like maybe I missed something about their love, but I think it's. I still am assuming I'm going to watch it again. It's, how many times look at your phone? What? How many times I, look, you look I at your turn off phone? my phone. All right. I just still feel like it was a little underdeveloped, that relationship. Yeah, Came maybe. Can you on that? I don't know. I mean, I don't remember the film. I didn't see it. I have to come don't clean. I didn't see the movie, but <laughs> I don't know. I Again, this like. It's ruining your criticism. You're like, I don't know. I didn't have a kid then. I loved it. <laughs> I did love it. I saw it one time. We've talked about this. I, I have a hard time. I was, I was, in, I enjoyed the fuck out of it. I didn't have any of these questions, but also this is the way I watch film. I've often either a movie, the first time I see a movie, either I'm like, this is a piece of shit and right. none of this makes sense and is obnoxious. This acting sucks. This script sucks. This sucks. Or I'm like, eh, it was pretty good. Or I'm like, I was all in. I loved it. I, when I was watching it, none of these things came up to me. But, I, you know, I'm a simple man. Ask some of the commenters from the last I one. I see what you said. I, I just but feel I, like. I just was, I was all in. I loved it. I loved every second and frame and, and thing about it. I Literally at no point was I like, I'm bored. I hate this. I suck. 
But also, because I have so much trust and faith in Scorsese, I'm like, you take me on this ride. Right, right. And I hate, I know we were critical of Louis for saying this about Stanley Kubrick, that he can just do anything and is not without critique. That's why I felt the need to say, I, I thought, you know, I think Color Money is not a great film. But this movie... It was like I was at being hosted by the greatest of all time. And I'm like, I love it. I love what you, well, you know I what I think it did. was. I think this movie was his version of like Schindler's List, you know, even though it's mm-hmm. a, for Schindler's List it's, is the white savior or the now Jewish savior. But for Scorsese's version, it is the white devil. But it's still essentially a commemoration. And if you think about the beginning with them all, it reminds me a lot of the Jews praying in the beginning of Schindler's List and the ending reminds me a lot of Schindler's List where it shows the real people. You know right. But I mean? you hate yeah, I do hate that. I liked it a little more Scorsese because I thought it was interesting because Scorsese, I felt like we're saying with the end, like we can't ever really get to the heart of the tragedy. At the end of the day, this is just my my attempt at telling the story and there's limitations to art and showing how like awful it was. And I like that. I felt like that actually had a more deliberate point. I feel like Children's List, he's just saying at the end, this is a real story. This is not a movie. You know what I mean? Which is bullshit. Every movie you make is a movie. Now, what was your interpretation of the sort of uh, surprise, by the way, at the end you're talking about? Scorsese? Or you have Scorsese coming out and making it this radio I think it was, show. I think it was that. What was your interpretation? I think he was saying like, you know, People have, the only way we really go th- show this is through like art, and people have tried different ways. And me, I'm similar to this radio show where there's bells and whistles and different music to show it, but ultimately there's limitations to how you can really get to the reality of something. And ultimately, at the end of the day, there's a limitation to the story itself, you know? Right, but it also felt like sort of a a, a, no, a meditation on like that the true crime obsession now that we're in that like yes. these horrible horrible things have happened that now is just entertainment yes and it also it feels like touches on the white man just kind of making native americans entertainment right but i think he's saying i'd like to think he's saying he also can't fully escape that i'd like to think he's not saying He's not being really cocky and being like, but this movie is different. I think he's saying there's a limitation. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying he's I'm saying he's saying, you know, this is what we've done is exploited these horrors. And well, he's done it he's done it in many ways with the murder all all his films are sort of um I, Yeah, I don't think it's com- to me I mean everyone has a different interpretation. I didn't see it as completely black and white. I have, I think it's mixed feelings. I think he's like he felt connected to the story and wanted to make it, but he's recognizing that at the end of the day it is just me telling the story. It isn't we can't really get to the reality of the grief. There's a limitation to how far I can go and a lot of what I do is still to entertain. But you also see his, you see how sad he is. You see his like own personal grief and right. sadness, you know what I mean? But do you see also that the in that scene, the Native Americans have no say in the telling of the story. Yes. It's white people telling the story of right. Native Americans to other white people for their entertainment. Which is, yeah, no, but I mean, I mean, obviously, like, I don't think he's so ironic that he's saying this movie was should have been made. He obviously thinks the movie should be made. Right, right. And he just, sees, he just thinks there's limitations to that. Yes. And then it ends with, I think, in a way, like, Showing the it ends smartly. It, sh- it ends on the it's hey, hey, hey. showing that is beautiful because it's showing their culture and how much their culture had been decimated and the beauty of their culture. So I think he's like, this is ultimately a story, but it should end just showing how beautiful their culture is and how much of that was decimated. Right. You know. So two thumbs up. <laughs> um, but you like overall, if you had to give it a letter grade, what are we talking here? I'm giving it like uh, I'm giving it like a B. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say C plus or C minus. No, oh. no. I mean, it's still Scorsese. Okay. Well, I mean, still I think- the top I think, five greatest movies ever made. I think <laughs> Sam Rell gave it a D minus. No, no. There's too much to contemplate, and there is a uniqueness to it. I just wonder if there was a lack of- For me, the, the, the height of a movie is going in and having some real revelations of the character by the end and learning- like you learn something. The characters don't have to change, but you learn something. I had no idea the Native Americans were mistreated. <laughs> I just was like, well, I thought it was a lot of feathers and we're just and this fun. Group we just give money to and we turkey. Love- <laughs> we exchange turkey and, and well, you goods. learned something. But like for me, it's like I felt like they revealed too early, early on, and like how awful these guys were, and they were so awful. It put it in a in a corner where it's a little flat emotionally. After a while, you're like, all right, they're awful. They're still doing this. They're awful, right? You know what I mean? I think he he chose this kind of contemplation because, like, if it was a mystery, you'd be really excited. It'd be like the real like 
the true crime thing. Like you'd, it'd actually be like full on entertainment. But I actually don't necessarily think that's bad. I think you can use those things to like tell a pretty powerful story, which is what like Chinatown did. You know what I mean? Right. I think it's Kubrickian in the way he kind of takes away the traditional elements of what's entertaining and instead made it more of a contemplation the whole time. But that contemplation ultimately felt like a little flat. And I guess I do think it would have been more dynamic from the, I, I hate to be a woke bitch, but this is the first time I'm going to say it. I think it would have been more dynamic from the perspective of Lily Gladstone the whole time. I think it would have been more intense and more interesting. And I think she's more of an interesting character. And I, I just think he settled on such awful people that like, I don't know. I don't think they're the framework of the story. You know, I just think he picked the wrong narrative right. center. But that's kind of what he does. Jake LaMotta, Travis Bickle. Yeah. Henry Hill. I know, but I guess in this there were like a lot more interesting people you'd want to hear from more, you know? Right. You know, I think it was, you know, I don't know. But, you know, but that being said, it was, you know, it's kind of like a comic who you're like, I don't like all of what they're doing, but I recognize if they stopped that, they wouldn't be unique. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm, like Bobcat. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, uh, but still, you know, still powerful. And uh, I think the book was a lot better. And sound off in the comments, folks. Sound off in the Let comments. Let us know. Did you like it? Did you love it? You hate Ron on? You think I'm an idiot? Who knows? And by the way, just to allude to some other podcasts we've done, may, if you're going to call someone an idiot, make a case. Make a case. Don't just write, you're a moron. Educate yourself because it makes your side of whatever argument you're making, it just makes you look like you have absolutely nothing to add to the conversation. And usually that is why people do that. Yes. They say, why don't you do some research? <laughs> and I'm like, well, why don't you tell me what you're referencing? Right. And why do you act like I don't have and plenty you, of information? And if you can't, like, bring up the evidence, it means you don't fucking have it. You know, you're yes. calling them a moron. And edu you say educate yourself is projection because why can't you educate them? Because you don't really have the ability to. Exactly. Educate yourself. Every time you type educate yourself, you should type out educate myself. You should just say that in the comment. Yes. <laughs> and also for the guy who shared the last one and, uh, and, and added me or what's it called? Tagged me and said, I stopped listening to this halfway through because Rana is so insufferable and tagged me. Just keep that as a thought in your head. You don't have to say yeah, no tag. <laughs> no tag. I don't even know. Why do I need to know? Yeah. <laughs> Just have the thought. And believe me, all the <laughs> shit about him, I screenshot it and send it to him. I slide it under now his door. I'm not even trying to. I, I usually avoid this, but he fucking tag. Why are you tagging me? Just fucking, you know, I don't know. Anyway, but other than that, a lot of the comments are nice. Please um, comment about how I look thin and hot. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, keep keep. Going to the movie. Do we have a thing? We have cut, but like we should have a, and we'll see you at the picture show. We'll see you. Uh, There's so many good movies I'm excited to see that I can't I see now. Well, the killer I can see, the Fincher. You'll be able to see that? It's on Netflix. It streams on Netflix. What? I can watch oh, that. Oh, wow. Well, the holdovers? What about the holdovers? I don't know. I'm, I'm on the road. I'm in D.C. next week, so maybe Matt Wayne and I can go see it Saturday. Yeah. It's funny. Now that you used to be like, after 30 minutes, you're like, let's get off. Now that you have a kid, you're like... All right. No, we're believe me, I'm through. dying. But by the time we're wrapping up know, 10 minutes early. Usually we do an hour and 48 minutes because we only want to talk about. You don't know House of Games? I always wanted to what talk. What the fuck is House of Games? It's a classic. Oh, David, David Mamet. Mamet? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that movie. with. Uh, Why are you acting like it's fucking crazy? Is that what it's called? House of Games? Yes. Joe Montaigne. Rebecca Minya. Pigeon. Rebecca Pigeon? His no, wife. that's Spanish Prisoner. No, she's is she not the one in that too? Yes, she is. No, it's Lindsay Krauss is her name. Uh, she's not in any other they films. All House look of like, Games they all rules. Look the same. We should do Mammoth. I always wanted to do Mammoth before. Or do we do it and I forget? No, we didn't do Mammoth. We'll do Mammoth. I tried to do I Mammoth. Like, I want to do Spanish uh, prisoner. What? I was like Spartan. You Spartacus? That's Spartan. Not him. Spartan. That's Kubrick. Sort Spartan. Of. It's uh it's uh Vigra. It's Val Kilmer. I don't know Spartan. Spartan's great. Well, House of Games fucking rules. It's like so beautiful and Hitchcocky. And I watched The Grifters and then House of Games. Oh, I love The Grifters. Yeah, Can we talk so The good. Grifters? No. The Stephen Grifters. Friends, we could, do, we could do High Fidelity and Stephen The Grifters. Stephen Friends does not get enough love. He's one of the best. No, High Fidelity rules, I Grifters rules. The Grifters rules. is incredible. That By ended. the way, and Scorsese produced that and has a voiceover the same year as Goodfellas. He was hot. I know. Paul and Kale famously said the ending oh, of The Grifters was more impactful than anything in Goodfellas, the violence. <laughs> she sucks just fucking say it she sucks she's a great writer but her opinions fucking suck anyway where, where can they see you 
Um, <laughs> you can see me here, right here on YouTube. The newest special, enough for everybody. I mean, if you're watching Great this, special. surely you've seen the special, I would imagine. But watch it again. <laughs> Go to punchuplive.com slash Joe hyphen list that's where you can sign up for my email list all my dates are there punch up live this is the future you want punch up live I'm on, I just got on for my special so go on there and, and go to my special and also that's, subscribe yeah that's big and uh, I'm in DC November 17th and 18th I'm gonna try to go to the movies and um, and then uh, I'm off the rest of the year basically oh god here's uh, people are texting you know I'm, I'm one of these guys that have his phone at all times I know, all right. I gotta go to a movie and just have my phone on vibrate you're like a doctor with a beeper yeah, yeah shit's blood or whatever Um, yeah go to Check it out. And uh, I'm in Dallas this weekend, Dallas Comedy Club. I'm in Toronto at a club next weekend. I'm at uh, Club Comedy in Seattle, December, the second week of December. Go check it out. RonOnHirschberg.com. And spread the word. Tell a friend. Spread if you the like word. this, share it. Tell some people. Say, hey, shoot it off. Spread the word. Spread the love. Spread um, the word. And if you're going to call me an idiot, tell me why you think you're, you're, I'm an idiot, and I'll write back to you. And then you'll go, oh, I didn't know you were going to read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll justify uh, people trying to erase people off the planet. <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, anyways, yeah. Subscribe, like, tell a friend, share, and... Um, yeah, uh, ceasefire and the genocide. <laughs> Abolish the police. God, BLM. <laughs> uh, yeah, peace in the... Yeah, cut. Wait, why are you saying it's good? We're not even done. Action. You should just drop the Action. mic. <laughs> cut. <laughs> I'm doing Chris Rock. All right, goodbye. Joe likes Scorsese and Ronan is Jewy. It's Joe and Ronan. Talk movie.